Hello, I'm Julia Dreblo from SRI Services and I'm here to talk you through the Fund EcoMarket tool, which is an online tool for financial services intermediaries to help people understand the ethical, social, environmental options that are available to retail investors today. So there are four main areas that we'll focus on today. First of all, I'll give you a quick run through of what Fund EcoMarket is, what the features are of the tool, the information that can be found on Fund EcoMarket, and how it fits into the advice process. Fund Eco Market only shows information on ethical, social and environmental issues with regard to funds. It doesn't carry financial performance, it doesn't carry information on pricing or distribution. It does, however, list all of the regulated retail onshore funds in the OIC, life and pensions areas and investment trusts. It has also got a few CCAVs and discretionary fund managers which are listed effectively by invitation only. The website is advice process driven, which means it's designed to be used by financial advisors. Now, there are lots of different ways it can be used. It can be used just as a research tool, but it's designed to be able to fit in with the way financial advisors operate. It's also open and free for everybody to use. So although the tool is for financial advisors, part of the purpose of it is to help raise awareness of this area and to help people to understand what's available. So I don't put any blocks in place to stop people from reading up on this information. So the site is also independent. I run the site. This is my information that I go out researching from fund managers and presenting on the site in a way that I believe is most useful for financial services intermediaries. The site is sponsored by fund managers, but it's not only their funds that are on the site, it's everybody's funds that are on the site. So Fund Eco Market has a number of different uses. It can be used just as a research tool. You can search on a fund name. You can search on the funds that are available in a particular asset type. Or you can search for a particular criteria, for example, if someone wants to avoid coal, oil and gas companies. Fund Eco Market is designed to complement existing tools. Financial services intermediaries will have all financial information already on funds. This fills in the gaps of the information that they don't normally have access to elsewhere. So importantly also, Fund Eco Market helps to redirect capital in a way that clients would like us to. So there are a lot of clients who are interested in particular areas, be they environmental or social concerns, or they've got areas that they strongly dislike and they don't want to direct their money towards those companies. So Fund Eco Market enables you to look at those areas and generate a list of those funds that focus on the areas that your client's interested in. The first filter option is policies, issues and themes, which is a list of those different areas, ethical, social, environmental and governance, that a client may be interested in. Now, when you click on the filters here, the funds that come through on the list will be those that have all of those options on it. So you may have environmental issues and social issues. So you will have a list of funds that have both of those options reflected through their fund strategies. The next filter option then is approaches and applications because it's really important to understand that even though most funds will say they have an environment policy, they will look at environmental issues very differently. Some will be excluding companies, some will be focusing on solutions companies and the change agents, some will be focusing on individual resources. So this filter option shows you the different strategies and you can select those that suit your client's needs. The third filter option here then is the corporate activity area, which really goes through the ways in which different fund managers operate behind the scenes. So resources, stewardship, responsible ownership, different voting and engagement strategies that people have. You can select the different main strategies within this filter option too. And then affiliations and collaborations. Who are the fund managers working with? What are they members of? How involved are they in different projects? Then the last option there is understanding what type of company you're investing in. Larger companies, smaller companies, specialists, non-specialists, etc. There's no single right answer as to what is the best fund management company or the best fund. Different fund management companies and different funds will suit different clients. The next three filter options then are areas you will be familiar with. So product type, asset type and geographic region. Now if you have a look at those you'll see that the main information on how funds run sit within OICs and CCAVs, basically the primary funds. The life and pension funds really very often are just mirror funds, so the core information is held in the primary fund. Asset type, you'll be familiar with. All the asset types that are reflected through ethical, social and environmental funds today are listed on this tool. Likewise, geographic region, the regions that are covered by these fund strategies are listed and you can use the filters to select those geographic regions that are of interest to you. This is, of course, particularly important to portfolio planners, discretionary managers and those who are looking to construct 
portfolios that suit their clients' needs. So this next slide covers two main areas. It really looks at client motivations and maps those across the different strategies that are available to retail investors today. So to look at the types of different strategies, I have devised a system called SRI Styles. So the SRI Styles area breaks down into three main groups. The ethical funds that people are most familiar with are those that really focus on avoidance. Now I refer to those as negative ethical funds because their core strategy is about excluding different areas like armaments, tobacco, etc. The next group I've called ethically balanced. Now those are the funds that look at the different pros and cons of companies across a wide range of issues and will make balanced judgment decisions on which are perhaps the best in sector or which on balance are considered to be appropriate or inappropriate given the stated policy of the funds. And the third category there is faith-based funds. Now, there's only a small number of those funds that are specifically for investors of faith, although you'll see by using the tool that there's a number of other options where it's recognised that these funds are highly appropriate for investors of faith. The next area is SRI-themed fund options. Now, there are three main strands to that. There's those funds which focus on sustainability, which is a combination of environmental and social issues. There are those funds that focus just on environmental issues and the next group are those that focus on primarily on social issues. Now environmental and social funds may well have features where they're looking at other areas as well but their core strategy will be around social and environmental issues whereas the sustainability themed funds typically are more broad based and they tend to bring in lots and lots of different issues and give them a more equal weighting. So the third group is what I've referred to as ESG+. Financial advisors will know today that environmental, social and governance issues are increasingly under the spotlight. And what we've seen today is a massive uptake in the number of investors who are saying they're going to build ESG issues into their investment decision making. The funds I list on this site are those I call ESG+. I'm looking for those that go above and beyond and also build in other factors, which means that they can clearly articulate their strategy to ESG, plus they will have areas of avoidance or engagement where they're looking at more active ownership strategies, which then leads me into the final group, which is responsible ownership. Now, responsible ownership, also known as stewardship, is the area where we're seeing more and more fund managers saying that it's time to start working more closely with companies in order to encourage them to take environmental, social and governance issues and areas particularly like climate change more seriously, both for the benefit of their clients, of their individual investors and of society as a whole. So those different strategies are combined in many different ways by different funds and they map differently across the different aims that an individual investor may have when it comes to selecting one of these funds. There are three main areas that I suggest intermediaries should be aware of because the client's motivations will shape the different type of funds that make sense for them to invest in. The first is those group of clients that are more interested in ethical values. So they're making decisions from the heart. The next group then is those that say, this makes financial sense. Look at the way the world's going. We've got increasing resource constraints. Climate change is a growing problem. Things are changing. I want to invest with a fund manager who understands those issues and is looking for opportunities and avoiding risks in those areas. And the third group of people, and the third core motivation, is those clients who want to help drive positive change. Now, a lot of those funds now use the label impact, but that's not the only group that should be considered in this area. Most of the funds with these strategies are helping to shift money out of companies that are the worst polluters, those with the worst human rights track records, etc., and towards those companies with better strategies. This next slide shows you an example six-stage advice process that you could use to build Fund Eco Market into the way you operate. The first task is for you to build an ethical fact find question into your standard fact find so you can identify who is and isn't interested. The next step then is to identify the core areas of interest. So just get a feel for what the kind of things are that a client's interested in. Now you can use our style finder tool online to help you do that. Clients can fill in that questionnaire and that will tell you the top three SRI styles that suit your client's opinions on this subject. 
So step three is then about refining your client research, which is about using the filter options on Fund Eco Market as prompts to work out which areas your client would like to support or avoid and what's important to them. So use the filter options to help you come up with your list of funds that may suit a client's needs. You can then search for those funds and come up with a long list of potentially appropriate fund options. You should then record these findings for your audit trail. And then of course the last step is to bring that into the way you operate. Now Fund Eco Market can help you with this by giving you information on the asset types, geographic region, product types, etc. Or you may have your own methods. But either way, you've got to amalgamate a client's SRI aims with their financial aims in order to come up with the best possible list of options that suit your client's personal opinions. So this last slide just gives you a bit of a brief summary of the information that's on Fund Eco Market. There's around about 400 fund options. As I said, the majority of the information sits in the primary fund options. You've got the SRI classification system that links into the SRI style finder tool that can help you to make the advice process more straightforward. You've got print and report functions right the way through the tool that enables you to have a proper audit trail, which is absolutely essential for the advice process. There's support information, there's blog, there's news, and there's explanations of what the different SRI styles are and different filter options are. There's downloads, there's information that you can use as prompts when you're sitting with a client and there's a find advisor area because although this site is intended for financial services professionals it's not only necessarily used by those people. With an open site anybody can have access to it and they may well be looking for an advisor in this area so we have a list that you can join if you wish. And then the last icon there shows you social media, of course. We are on LinkedIn and Twitter, and we would encourage you to have a look at those areas in order to keep up to date, to be aware of what's going on, to get an idea of those areas that may be in the news at the moment. So we, we regularly post on both of those. So I hope you have found that useful, that quick run through of the site. Thank you for listening.